Matilda was five years old and she was uh, in year one. Uh, we had booked in an eyesight test and Matilda started to cry trying to read the top line, which is the huge letters. And she said, Mommy, I can't read them. And I looked at her and I, like some parents do, I'm sure, I was a little bit annoyed thinking, but you know your letters. You know your letters, Matilda. And she just said, I know my letters, Mommy, but I can't read it. So the ophthalmologist was amazing. And she said, do you mind if I take a picture of Matilda's, the back of her eyes? And I said, sure, why not? Let's see. So the lady came back in and they looked ashen. And she said to me, I have a letter here. Um, this is the picture of the back of Matilda's eyes. And all the veins were jagged, which basically meant the pressure in her head was far too high. It was extremely dangerous. So we were whisked in an ambulance to uh, Whitechapel Hospital. The nurse and the doctor, they arrived and she said, can I take your mummy away to chat to mummy and daddy? The nurse stayed with Matilda and Molly. And she sat us down and said, we're so shocked because she's so well. Um, but she has a plum sized tumour in the back of her head here. We've already made the arrangements for you to go to Great Ormond Street in the morning. We're going to give Matilda a lot of medicine now to try and take the pressure from her head down because it's dangerous. She will be operated on the day after. The surgery will be about eight and a half hours. And that was when, as I said, it's like somebody just bringing a bulldozer into your head, into your life, into your family. How can it be the size of a plum? And we didn't know it was there. Um, I was terrified. Jamie was terrified. We had to go back to Matilda and act like parents that she knew, not two parents that were absolutely devastated, distraught, terrified. So Jamie and I discussed with Matilda that she had this huge blob in her head and it was a naughty blob and it's got in there and it's not allowed to stay and it has to come out. But the only people that can get it out are the surgeons. And these were all the people that she'd met. So they came back and they had this chat with Matilda. And Matilda says, yes, I have Bob the blob in my head. So the cancer became Bob the blob and he is Bob the blob in all her notes. That's what the surgeons and all her consultants and all the staff called her tumour was Bob. Which is your favourite fish? Uh, the big fat one. The big fat one? Where is he? That big. We were warned that Matilda's surgery perhaps will leave her in some ways less able than she had been before, whether that was speech, eyesight, hearing, movement. Uh, we had no idea because it just depended on what they could get to. Obviously, when Matilda woke up, she was screaming. She was pulling at her tubes. She was shouting at everyone. She was hysterical and she was given water to swallow. And all these things happened that I nearly passed out because it was awful to see her like that. But the nurse was incredible because she reversed my psychology by looking at Matilda and she said, what's she doing? And I went, she's trying to rip the tubes out, stop her. And they were like, no, 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 she's moving her hands. So her motor skills, she's moving, she's talking, she's shouting at us because she's come out of eight and a half hours of surgery and she's delirious, but she's also in pain and uh, she's swallowing water, which means she can swallow. So all these things are tick, tick, tick in terms of the first look at her is incredible. They were pretty, pretty 100% sure that they got most of it. And at that stage, I was... You know, you, you're relieved beyond belief because at that stage you think, well, it's most of it's gone. And they didn't want to do any more uh, treatment because they were very happy to just watch her. We were told that 10 years previous to her operation, they wouldn't have been able to get to that part of her brain. They wouldn't have been able to save her. But through the research and through pioneering medicine and years of putting that money into research and, and pushing things, they were able to save her. And I remember that ringing in my ears when the doctor said 10 years ago, this wouldn't have been able to happen without the research. So that's why I want to help Children with Cancer UK.
Matilda is now, uh, well, she's 12 years old, Matilda. Um, she is a force to be reckoned with. She is not defined by what happened to her. She is absolutely glorious and she is everything you want a 12 year old to be. And she's managed to fulfill this life that I can look back at and think you were given that opportunity to still be a very active child to use those skills. And she has. She really understands and is very grateful that she's here because of a lot of amazing people and because of the money that goes into the research as well. She understands that without that money, she possibly wouldn't have been here. I think it's really important we don't forget people that have got continuing illnesses that were present before the pandemic, that have been diagnosed during the pandemic. Children with cancer are, it's a huge diagnosis every day for families. Um, we can't forget that these people are really important and that still need research and money being put into it. And, you know, I think if we put ourselves in that situation, we wouldn't want the door to be shut, so to speak, in terms of where we can take our health.